Hey friends, how's it going? It is night time in the saw shop. I'm getting ready to pull apart Buckins 850 here. Uh, again, we had a crankshaft failure on it. You can see it's interesting. I can actually see where the crack was now. It happens, friends. Not the most pleasant experience uh, when you break a fairly unobtainium crank on a super rare saw that isn't yours, but uh, day in the life of a saw porter. You builders know what I'm talking about. It's funny with saws. You get on a good roll and then you'll have a few in a row that knock you down. That's why, friends, um, I'm just a fella having fun with power saws. I know what I know and um, the minute you start thinking you know what's going on, the saw gods will show you a thing or two. They'll be like, oh yeah? Okay, so we got Buckets 850. Well, look what we have back on the bench. It's actually kind of exciting, friends. We have Buckins Super Pro 70. And you know what's funny? Uh, the compressions come back on this saw. This is the first back I ever ported. Now, you guys remember this one. The six pretty rowdy. She's a fairly rowdy power saw. Now, what is it doing here, Tin Man? Funny story. So, friends, um, interesting. Well, she's got some of that good fur pitch on her. Oh, it's the smell of beautiful British Columbia. I love it. Uh, when this, when this stuff that's going on in the world is over, the Tin Man needs to go to the island. It's on my bucket list. I've always wanted to go there. Can't go there right now, but one day, friends. I'm going to go to British Columbia. Uh, I want to shake hands with Buckin, and uh, my mecca is Walker Saw Shop. For those of you that are new or, or haven't heard the story, so friends, this is how I started porting power saws. I, uh, I cut with a couple of fellas. Uh, they're older fellas, or older than me. They're in their 50s. These guys have been running power saws forever. Um, I met my buddy. Uh, I was buying power saw parts off him. I found an ad and he had a cylinder and piston I needed. Long story short, uh, he helped me build the saw on his bench in his shop. We've been buddies ever since. I was cutting with that feller one day. He has a pretty, pretty ridiculous collection of power saws. One of these days, I, I'm going to ask him nicely. I'll go over there and we can fire up. That guy, that guy has one of the best collections of large displacement power saws of anybody I've seen. It's... To see them all running would be cool. Anyhow, I'm rambling. He pulled out uh, a nasty power saw one day. It sounded nasty. It had dual dual ports on the exhaust. It was a 372. And it had a sticker on it that said, Walker Saw Shop, Nanaimo, British Columbia. Well, he threw that to me with a 24 on it. And uh, I was noodling oak with it. I was like, wow. Like, what is, what's the deal here? And he said, walkerized and he pointed to the sticker and I went what so he said it's ported well friends I'd never seen a ported power saw then and that was it I was hooked uh that was a saw that probably Donnie uh Walker did maybe Bobby did it I don't know but uh it's from walkers and uh I was hooked from that day forward I had to search for how to port power saws and here I am um so it would be a special day for for this guy to go to Walker's Saw Shop. Um, without Walker's, I, I wouldn't be doing this because I never I never even knew what a ported saw was. Now, moving forward, the Super Pro 70 here. I really like this saw. We got wicked RPM out of it. It pulls pretty good on top. Something's funny going on with this saw. It's not funny. We're still experimenting. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to find good timing numbers for McCullough chainsaws, hence what we're doing here. Um, I don't know. Most of the guys that I know, in fact, almost all the guys I know that port Max don't use a timing wheel. They make some ripper saws, but um, it's more of a by feel thing. Well, because I use a timing wheel, I need to know what the timing numbers are and write them in my book, and, and then we know. So, um, I have never ported a Mac. You guys have seen this saw go. Here's a little clip of this saw ripping right here. Okay, 
those of you that haven't seen this thing, this thing whales pretty good. It doesn't quite have enough grunt when you dog it in. Um, I don't think that's an exhaust roof issue, as you guys can see. This saw's got decent compression. It's not a compression powerhouse. Um, we cleaned up the piston and reused the rings in this, but it's got good compression. Um, I have some theories about what I did to the intake on this saw um, that we're going to delve into. I'm going to pull this saw down while I'm building this. This is our test saw. Um, my buddy from Texas, Caleb, sent me this saw so that I could have a, a larger displacement Mac to grind on. I gave this saw to Bucken or sent it to him and it's like, here, try this. He ran it a bit and his thoughts were the same as mine. I didn't know how this saw ran stock because I never ran it stock. That's why I pulled this one out and ran it stock because I'm like, okay, how does a stock 850 run? It runs pretty good. I could feel... I could feel what it needs and what it wants and uh, and go from there. This, I just ran it ported. So I got a lot of good data on this that I'm going to use on this. But this saw here, um, I may have gone a little too far on the intake. And what's happening, I think, and again, I don't know, friends, when you dog this in, it's slowing down the intake velocity just enough that it stumbles a little bit. If you take the load off it, it goes right to high RPM and then pulls. Um, so what I'm going to attempt to do, friends, is get the pull back into this. I'm actually going to give it less intake timing. I didn't push the numbers a ton on this saw. Um, I think I'm like in the low 150s. I don't know if that's safe on a Mac. Low 150s would typically be wicked on any saw I run. Um, could even go a little farther. I, I went slightly on the error of on the side of caution on this saw but um i think we can make it better so in the name of learning uh we're going to tear this saw back down again and i'm actually i'm actually going to do some intake work to it today we're going to rip this saw back down and uh i'm going to show you what i propose to do to this thing this saw this saw is going to get a modified crank. I'm going to attempt to put an 800 crank and an 850 um, with a different flywheel and I'm going to have to modify the starter. We're building a hot rod here. I do not have another 850 crank. If the 800 crank doesn't work, we will put an 850 crank back in this. Uh, I will find one and buy it and we can start over again. Um, whatever it happens, we'll, we'll find parts. I really, really want to run this saw. In the meantime, I might make another pipe for this saw. If this pipe works, or if I feel it's going to work, this pipe will bolt onto this saw, and uh, I will probably, I'm going to take uh, more material, and I will make a, a pipe that's exactly like this, and I'll send Buck in this saw with a pipe on it. Why not, right? Uh, I appreciate the man. He's my friend, and he gives me wicked feedback on saws. That's what I'm after. I don't, I don't do this as a business. I do this because I really enjoy it. And I, I'm just a fellow putting around in this power shop, saw shop and, or puttering around. And it's like, I really, really enjoy working on power saws. And the more feedback I can get, the better. Okay, friends, uh, I'm going to pause you here, tear this thing down a little bit and let's compare the two cranks and I'll show you what I'm going to do. I have the saw completely ripped down. Here's what we got here. For those of you that haven't seen my porting. So basically I dropped these transfers right down. I may go back in here. I'm probably going to go back in here friends. But we're going to go slow and steady. I took the lip out of the exhaust. Uh, raised it I believe 4 degrees. We're at 199 on the exhaust. Uh, intakes at about 131 right now. We'll share along with this build. And uh, see what we can do with it. Okay so. What we're going to do, you know, I think that crank broke for a reason, friends, because the day after I broke the crank, I got this in the mail for my buddy Dave. This is, this looks like an NOS uh, oil tank and bottom end for an 850. So this one's broken. Fucking loves his Mac, so I'm going to try to build him basically a brand new saw. Um... I got other parts that Dave sent, 
Uh, we're going to do a little swappy swap and uh, make Buck and Saw really nice. Okay, so this is not my idea. This is Dave's idea. Dave is a Mac man. He's a saw man. He knows his Macs. This is that rusty crank. It actually has rust on it again just from sitting. Uh, I cleaned this crank up the best I could. Got a little moto seal on the bottom. Okay, and that's that stub end that we broke off. Now, what I'm going to have to do, friends, is I'm going to have to remove these rod bolts. Okay, these bearings are put in there one at a time. Okay. He was kind enough to send us new 850 big end rod bearings. He's a heck of a guy, that Dave. He really is. Thank you, buddy. Okay. So, we're going to have to build a new crank assembly. I will pull this bearing off. Nothing wrong with this bearing. They are gigantic on these Macs. I'm going to have to pull this bearing off. I'll show you guys how I do that. Um, give me a few minutes. I'm going to disassemble this. And we'll go do these rod bolts. 964 they are. I'm going to have to buy a 964 socket because I don't have one. Now, I'm going to do this very carefully. Because I don't want to lose any of these bearings. Okay. There you go. Now you ask yourself, how does a fella, how does a fella get these bearings back in? Well, I've never done this before, but from what I can figure, a guy's got to put grease on here and pack them in. Okay. Um, I'm going to put these in a bag right now because I am frightened to lose them. Okay, friends, uh, my idea was to use my crank splitter after I pulled the rod off to pull this bearing off. I think that's the least invasive way to do it. There we go. Another use for the crank splitter. Okay. And again, this bearing feels beautiful. Not too worried about it. Okay, let's compare these two cranks before we get any farther into the program here. Okay. 850 crank 800 crank now this is dave's idea and i like it these are not the same crank they appear similar okay 850 800 okay they appear quite similar sorry let's let's compare them okay the lobes are the same it is the same stroke i checked the specs here's the difference um there's a little less weight in here. This shaft is shorter. I can't remember what he said for weight savings. Uh, it's pointless for me to weigh these now because this one's broken. Um, I'll ask him. This is substantially lighter than this. Okay. Now, what I'm going to attempt to do. This is a flywheel off another Mac. I'm not sure what it is at this point. Okay. This is a lightweight flywheel compared to this, okay? This one's got more fins, more girth on the back, okay? What I'm going to attempt to do is this should make a Mac super zippy, okay? That's the plan anyways. Whether it'll work, I don't know, but it's kind of fun. Now, this is not plug and play. Uh, I am going to have to mod modify a longer starter shaft because when I put this on with the shorter crank, and here I'll show you guys, I love this kind of stuff. Thank you, Dave. He gets my brain going. He's always got ideas, and uh, ideas are what I need sometimes. Okay. Let's let me get these paws out of the way. Okay, friends, look at the difference. Okay, this flywheel is going to sit in closer to the case. Now, he's pretty sure that this is all going to fit, but we won't know. I'm going to have to put this bearing on here. Put this bearing on here, rather, and uh, mock this up before. Sorry, this bearing goes on. This giant bearing is for the flywheel. This roller bearing is for the PTO side on the Max. Again, we got good sealing from the Moto Seal. I'm going to have to clean all these parts up. Okay. Um, 
he's pretty sure and so am I I think we're gonna be fine that this is actually this is actually gonna fit and I think he's right um, as long as the coil will will pick up on this and it'll physically clear the case I think this is gonna work we don't know till we try um, let's see if we can assemble this crankshaft that's kind of where I'd like to get tonight I've never done this before friends so uh, let's all learn together that's what this is about learning and uh, I'm just having fun in my saw shop and uh, here's the piston we cleaned it up a little bit it's funny these marks you can't even feel them with your nail but they are there but that's kind of what you got to do with these max they uh their parts for these things are getting to be hard now you can have these cylinders bored we may do that in the future send a cylinder out to be bored and uh, we'll put an oversized piston in it you can bore them and have them re chrome okay i'm gonna get set up here and uh let's see if we can get those bearings on this new crank and get this rod ready to go and then um i'm mean, still gonna have to prep these cases i gotta put the oil pump in there i'm not even sure if there's an oil pump in this side don't believe there is um we have one i have i, I definitely have some mac parts i've been scrounging away and ben shelton sent me some parts before which has really helped thank you ben uh, he kind of got my Mac parts been going, and uh, I really appreciate that. And now I'm kind of trying to add to parts where I can. Okay, I'm going to get set up here, and uh, we'll see if we can get this crank rocking and rolling. Okay, here's our new crankshaft. I'm going to move this one out of the way. Here's our new crankshaft. We got new bearings. Okay. I'm going to show you guys how I'm going to do this again. I've never done this before, so... We're better to learn and do things than on YouTube is what I say. This is fun. Okay, so I counted these. There is, how many did I say? I think, I believe there's 22 crank bearings. Don't quote me on that. I did count them. I don't know if I mentioned it before. Okay, those are our crank bearings. Now I took some new grease. I'm just going to get situated here. I took some new grease. Okay, I'm going to grease up this crank journal so that these bearings will stick to it, okay? This isn't to lube it, this will just be to create suction, you know, and it'll stay put, or they should. I have done this on other bearings in the past, on other engines, hopefully it'll work here. I just need a rag, clean my fingers. This is new clean grease. We can always rinse the grease out with some brake clean after um, before we fire this off. Okay. Now I'm just going to lay these in here. Of course, I got the sausage fingers. And these things are tiny. Three. Four. I can just keep rolling them around. Five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and I'm trying to keep these flat. I'm sure they'll lay out fine. Where we are at eleven. <laughs> 10 man. How many bearings were in there? 22, 21, 12, 13. I'm just counting these for fun so that if anybody needs to know how many there are on in here, uh, this will tell you. Where are we at? 14. I believe there is 22. I can always count the bag for you guys if you want.
Okay, you guys can see that all these crank bearings in here, they're laying pretty flat. Now, I'm going to take I'm going to take the piston and the rod. Oh, we dropped one. Okay, we'll put it back in there. Take the piston and the rod. Okay, drop it in place there. Now I'll take the cap. Take our bolts. And I just, there's a lot of little odds and ends to do on these. Uh, I like working on Max. They are different. They definitely take more time. Um, they're kind of neat though. Uh, a lot of extra little parts and things of that nature. Now, these were pretty tight, so I'm just going to reef them down and call them good. Um, I couldn't find a torque spec for these. Uh, I had a couple of IPLs and things, but tight is tight. I, 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 I mean, I'm sure there is a torque spec, but... Um, there we go. Okay. There you go. Checking for up and down play. There is none. Feels smooth. There you guys go. That is how I, I mean, this is the first time I've done it. That is how you, you put bearings in a Mac crank. Um, Mac guys, how did I do? I always say that and uh, you guys laugh. It's true though. Okay, this bearing goes on here. Um, later on, I will heat this bearing and press it back on. It goes on there like that. In the meantime though, I'm curious. Hopefully you guys can see this here. I'm going to zoom you guys back a bit, okay? There we go. I'm curious. I'm just going to do it with the one bearing. Let's put this here. Again, there's that little lineup dowel. Little lineup dowel here. It's a little fumbly at times, but... Easier if you have both bearings on the crank. Okay, friends, I'm going to slide this back on there. Uh, this would be the intake side. Again, these Macs have a little bit of tape right. A couple of you asked me, oh, it'd help if I did it the right way. A couple of you asked me how I do that with Max. I just slide it down and it goes together. Well, it's because there's a taper machine into the bottom of the cylinder bore so that you can easily drop the piston. Max spent a lot of time on these cylinders. Believe me, um, these would cost a fortune to remanufacture, and that's probably why you don't see them anymore. Okay, let's find out. So we got this lightweight, I'm going to carefully rotate this, we got this lightweight flywheel. Will it fit without hitting the case? Dave was pretty sure this is going to work, and you know what? I think he's right. Put this flywheel on here. I hope you guys can see this. Okay, this is totally going to fit. <laughs> wow. Now, you guys ask, what is that going to do? Sorry, I'm just... I'm loosely fitting this because I want to see because this has been something we've been working on. What this is going to do is this is going to create a zippier saw. Now this might alleviate some torque. We're not sure. Um, rather than cutting, what you would typically do is you would cut these fins down to lighten them. Oh, here you go. Here you guys go. Okay. Um, if you wanted to lighten this, you could lighten it on the back. You could drill holes in it, but of course you want it to stay balanced. Okay. So what we're going to do, a lightweight flywheel on a Mach 850. Um, interesting stuff. Interesting, interesting stuff. Um, this will work. The, the, the hitch in this is I'm going to have to modify a starter um to get it to grab because this is physically inset farther which means that the the paws are going to be too far in there you guys go 
Um, I don't know. This is probably a 1010 flywheel, I'm guessing. 1010 flywheel, 800 crank, and then it Promac 850. And uh, we're going to build a real Psycho Billy Cadillac, one piece at a time. This is exciting stuff. Okay, friends, there we go. We are one piece closer. Um, I'm going to continue puttering with this thing. I want to have this thing running very, very soon. Uh, I might spend another couple of late nights out here and get this thing rocking and rolling. Um, we are probably, I don't know. Uh, we are probably going to decide I need to take this apart again. Um, what I'm doing right now, friends, is I'm trying to build... The perfect falling, bucking, all day, every day, 850 for bucking. Um, he wants to run these full time. These are, these max, these and 125s are probably the two saws that he loves the most. Uh, of course, 372s get a nod because they're wicked. But if he could fall and run these full time, he's going to run them. So, I'm going to attempt to go in stages and turn this thing up enough. I want this thing to be angry. But I don't want to take too much torque. Um, the reason why I'm not going too far on the intake, if if I'm not happy with the exhaust roof or we've lost too much compression or too much torque, <coughs> excuse me, friends, I'll put this thing in my lathe, I'll deck this cylinder, and I'll recut the uh, the pockets for the uh, bearings, and I'll put it back together. I did that on the Super Pro Seventy. That's why that thing thumps and it screams. That thing has decent compression for what it is. I spent the better part of a month here and there decking and cutting, recutting and hand lapping the bearing pockets. The bearing pockets, especially in the bigger saws, when you start putting power through them, you really gotta, you gotta hand lap the bearing pockets because what ends up happening is if you under tighten them, meaning you over cut your pockets, what's going to happen is you're going to under squeeze these bearings and what's going to end up happening is they're going to spin, okay, especially this one. Now, on the other hand, if you undercut the bearing pockets, I don't know the exact measurement, but there is, there is a sweet spot for clamping down these bearings hard enough that they won't move, but light enough, you'll feel it. If you have the pocket too small and you tighten it down, you will feel a slight load on the crank when you're spinning it. You gotta have a you gotta have a keen eye to do this kind of stuff and a good feel for what bearings should feel like. You can just feel it and what'll happen. If you overclamp that in one of these Macs that you ported, it'll get hot. Because remember, all this stuff expands. If it's, if it's a, a half a thousandth over clamped and you turn the saw up and you're running it, this will overheat and you'll throw this bearing and you'll blow the saw up. So um, be aware of that, friends. Just little notes that I've learned about Max. Again, I'm not a Mac guy. I'm a saw guy. Um, I haven't, this is the second Mac I've been into port. I'm going to do more, that's for sure. But uh, I'm learning. This has been my experience with McCullough's. They do take some time to port, but they're worth it. That Super Pro 70 rips. Uh, we're splitting hairs at this point, but I know it can be a little better. I want a little more pull on the bottom end. That's going to involve some intake work. This one, I went in a completely opposite direction, and I didn't do as much work to the intake, knowing what happened to that. Now, again, friends, this is a bigger saw. This saw will tolerate, or should tolerate, no, I guess I don't have to say will, this saw should tolerate more intake timing. But we're going to sneak up on it. We'll get it just right, and then we'll know. And we'll write it in the book, and then I don't, I don't have to think if I poured another 850, I can just do it. I'm trying to keep this build as simple as possible, because if I can do one or two more of these, and Bucking can have a fleet of tin man eyes. 850s that he wants to run. I'm a happy camper. Um, I'm all about making work saws. I can build crazier saws than I do and we're probably going to in the future. Um, a lot of you guys commented on that John at 630 Super I was running in that video. Um, how strong that is for a 66cc saw. That saw's turned up pretty warm. Uh, I already lost a bearing in that saw once. Um, 
I'm still working on it, trying to see if the bearing lets go again. If it lets go again, it wasn't just an anomaly. Uh, that saw has a super high pop-up piston, a high exhaust roof, and every go fast move I know how to do. Um, it rips good. Whether it'll be reliable, I don't know. Um, that build's two years old. There's probably, I don't even know how many tanks. Quite a few. Not as much as a logger would put through, but enough that I'm starting to trust it again. So, um, I don't want to turn these up so hot that they blow up within 50 tanks, 100 tanks. Um, one thing I know about guys that run saws full time, they might put two tanks a day, three tanks in their saw. You start thinking about that five days a week. That's 15 tanks a week. Uh, you know, a lot of guys will run a saw five, six hours a day. Start doing the math on that, friends. That's 30 hours a week. How many weeks a year? Uh, you can see. Um, so again, I'm rambling, but I want this to be nasty, but not so nasty that it might blow up. <laughs> No promises though. I get a little carried away sometimes when I'm porting these here old fashioned, good old timey power sauce. Anyhow, friends, there you go. 850 crank uh, or 850 cylinder, 850 bottom end, 800 crank. I think that's a 1010 flywheel. And we'll make up a starter shaft uh, when the time comes. Anyhow, friends, next time you see this saw, we'll start reassembling it. I will heat up this bearing and onto the crank. And uh, I think we're good. That's all I got for you tonight, friends. It's nighttime. It's probably about midnight. I'm going absolutely power saw nuts lately. Anyhow, as always, thanks for watching. Take her easy. And I'll see you guys in a couple days. Thanks for hanging out. Later.